what is up people and welcome back to the channel so today we are back on the chassis build and we are going to work on floor floor dimensions so right first of all someone noticed in my first video i missed off the bend amount bend yeah the bends in the main hoop so what i've done is i've jotted them on yeah so we've got 12, 77, 77, 12. So I'll do. So this one here is your 12. This one here is your 77. Yeah? So just so I'd uh, show you that. 77, 12. Also, somehow I made a slight error on my screen bar. Now, as you'll see, the top one is flipped 180 degrees and we are slightly off widthways and in the centre. So, I've made some slight modifications. I don't know how I did it. <clears throat> right? We are 210, 485, 825. Yeah? Sorry about the light. Yeah. So, that is 410, 485, 825 i don't know how i made that mistake i mean it's not very detrimental to the part at all you're never going to notice that it's basically 10 millimeters that's all that's off it's off slightly 10 millimeters so <clears throat> yeah not a problem anyway floor we have got one inch by one inch which is 25 by 25 three mil wall 25 by 50 three mil wall yeah now that is what makes my main floor right and these are my gussets now these are cut at 45 degrees yeah in your saw now pay a lot of attention to setting your saw up when you're cutting at 90 or 45 because it makes a lot of difference mine at 45 i've got a an old pin sitting in there out of a bonnet pin so once you've got set i've got clamped it and up in here uh basically it's one of these pins yeah and it's precision drilled so i've got my 45 and you know you've got your 45 right is once you've done four of them you get these nice little patterns yeah and then you'll take one out and you'll check your 90 degrees yeah let me try and raise that this is a bit tricky with one end yeah you need your 90 degrees like that and then you can check it as well on your 45 degrees which is in there like that so then you've got those now you have to make sure that your 45s are correct and i'll show you why so this is just some scrap, right? Now these are not quite 45 degrees. This one was when I was showing someone how to set up a welder and why you can't run it too hot because you melt all the material out the arse end of you, right? So you'll put that there like that and anyone will think, oh, that's 90 degrees. That looks good. But it ain't. If I put that on there and that on there, push it up, so we are where we need to be. See that gap? Let me zoom you in a bit more. See the gap? That, it's only a little bit. Yeah? But that makes a hell of a lot of difference. If I move you down to this yeah you watch when i'm doing that how much out of square it is right now you imagine how much that's gonna be at the end of that bar say so if that bar is 1250 long that tiny bit here has become nearly 10 mil at that end and then you put another one on this slightly out of 45 
And then when he gets down the bottom of there, it's another 10 mil out. And you work all the way around, and by the time you get back here, that's like that. And then you've got to squeeze it together, and then you're putting the shaft in the tension. And it's going to want to go... Ugh. So, the better you can get it, the better it is. So I want this to be 90 degrees, and then this sits in there. Can you see the gap still there? Yeah? <clears throat> what I do is I take this section out. It's not needed. Because that is going to have a weld up the inside. And I don't want to disturb the weld. So that, cutting that out, sort of wraps the weld. Can you see the gap? It's no good. Because we want to put that like that. And that like that. Imagine without the gap. Yeah? Don't forget, it's going to be... I don't use this on the outside. It's only going to be one inch. I've got to be one inch. I'll show you. So imagine these. I mean, you can put weld them. Like that. That can be your corner. Yeah? That, so that can be the corner of your chassis. Not a problem with that. Done it before. You can get a nice full weld all the way around. Or you can 45 degree them. Yeah? So you've got... Basically, 45 degree kind of thing. But for this purpose, you'll just have to use your imagination and imagine that they're cut at 45, or all that's fully welded, all of this is fully welded. I have seen people, and I did it on my first chassis, just put a plate here, this bent 90 degrees, so this section here is hollow. It works fine, but I decided I wanted to do this. So that sits like that. That sits like that. <clears throat> then my main hoop and my legs sit there. Yeah? So this is welded to this all the way around. We then have a full weld here, full weld here, full weld here and here, both sides, locking this unit together. Yeah? Locking it tight. And then my 45 mm tube comes down and I'll put it about five, five to eight mil in either side there. Then that gets fully welded, which also connects the three parts together. So this is welded to this, this is welded to this, and then this is welded to this, this, and this. Now that is a strong joint. Do you get me? That, that there won't fail. To make this fail, you would have to hit something extremely hard, extremely fast. Do you know what I mean? To move this much material, I think that's 3 mil, 3 mil, 3 mil, 2.65, basically 3 mil, seamless roll cage tube. That there, if you've hit something to break that, you are in a lot of trouble anyway. Right? <clears throat> so, that is how I do my corners. You get me? Shit, sorry. I zoom back out. So that is how I do my corners. I've made four sets of these just because I've got the saw set up. Right? So, that is how I do my gussets. These are the straights. Now, I'm unsure which floor pan I want to make. But... Basically, you've got your lengths and your widths. Lengths, widths. I buy them all in bulk. I've got loads of this stuff over there. So all this is going to get 45 to length. So the two lengths will get 45s. The two widths will get 45s at their desired length. And that gives you a square. Then you'll put these in each corner. Then on my two-seater chassis, two of these run down the middle. Now, I'm very tempted to do a two-seater because how many people out there have took a passenger ride in a space frame? I've never seen a space frame with two seats. Imagine, um, say you're doing hot laps. Do a hot lap, get a passenger in there, passenger in a space frame. It'd be amazing, wouldn't it? 
So, anyway, let's talk dimensions. So, did I draw it out? Yeah. So, this is my 2 to one I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it up on the stand like I did last right. time. So, that is my 2 seater 4 pan. People are asking, well, not asking, they are happy that I'm sharing my dimensions. I don't mind. I don't care. But keep in your mind, these are my dimensions. Not particularly your dimensions. The next man who built a chassis. So these are to be interpreted the way that you want to interpret them. But you're also going to have to modify them for what your needs are. Okay, so these are not set in stone measurements. These are just what I work with that I found work best for me and my chassis. Okay, so, and if you want to change material, some people only put 1.5 mil in their floor. I weren't happy with that. The floor, don't worry about weight in the floor. The floor is that low, it's helping your center of gravity. You understand what I mean? It's that low, it's not causing you any body roll. It's probably more helping your car be stable. <clears throat> anyway, so these are cut at 45 degrees, yeah? If you are not going to cut them at 45 degrees, say if this bend here, you're going to have it like that, yeah? You can knock, technically, 50 mil off the length of these because it's going to come all the way over. That'll be the same, but you can knock 50 mil off the length of these just to save that bit of material. And that's two inches straight away. Two inches, four inches, it all helps. So, my length of my chassis is 1335. The width is 1276, right? Millimeters. This outer ring is 25 by 25 mil, three mil wall. These here are 25 by 50 mil wall, three millimeters. And they sit, ID is 128 mil. That is about it, really. <clears throat> yeah, so this gap here is 550, 128, 550. These are my seat mount bars. They're gonna change those are just my dimensions, 260 from the back, 225 between, but that depends how tall you are, how short you are, so those are for anybody else, really. So that is my one floor. Don't forget, that's basic floor, just the basic outline. If you look, there's nothing in here, and there's nothing in here. You will need something in there, and you will need something in there. Whether you just want to put a bar here and put a big X or want a bar from there to there and there to there or put big X's or your pedal box is going to have to go up here somewhere and you, your fire extinguisher needs a mount, your exhaust is going to need a mount. You cannot leave it like this because you need something, yeah? X's, diagonals, triangulation, yeah? And over this, as I use this as an exhaust tunnel, I run these hoops. These are one inch CDS. I think that's also 2.65 mil wall. Yes. So that is the same wall as my roll cage tube. Yeah. Which is massive. Strong as fuck. So bad language. <coughs> and I hoop them over here. There's something like four of them. Yeah, which helps tie this section in together. You can run one of those over the top. Yeah, and then you could put box section, 125 mil long in there, if you wish. If you don't want the exhaust vent coming straight out the bottom. Completely up to you. It's, it's open design to how you want to interpret it, okay? You don't even need an exhaust tunnel. Your exhaust, if you're gonna run in a single seater, the exhaust will run down here and out the side. So you could get away with ditching the one, extending these, and move your seat further over. Do you know what I mean? It's pretty much however you want. 
This is my second floor plan. This is the one that most people run. It's not to scale, okay? It's not, it's nowhere to scale. These are not normally that long. But when I draw it, I like, these are squares that will end up a square. So really, this should have been like here, <laughs> but yeah, whatever. But yeah, same length, same width, knock 50 mil off if you want to come straight, knock 45s. You can do all of this without cutting a 45, you know what I mean? That's a straight bar, that's a 600 mil long, that's like 1226, give or take how accurate your measurements are on your 45s. If they're slightly off, this might be a bit wider, a bit shorter. You won't know until you've made it. Yeah, the main thing you're gonna need is the outer edge, right? So that's my flaws. Um, so basically, yeah. And that's what works with my main hoop design, my front leg design, you know, it just all comes together. But if you draw a square like that, well, if you build a square like that, a main hoop to my dimensions and the front legs to my dimensions, you ain't gonna be far off. Yeah? Anyway. Right then, just to add to that. Right. You know, I had that set up like that. Yeah. Imagine that cut 45 and we had the tube there. So it's set. You can't see in. It's as black as House of Spades. Yeah. That is how the front legs come down. Yeah. Not the back legs. The main hoop sits there on my normal chassis because this radius arm mount sits on it like that yeah you get me so hang on keep moving it on you'll see when we get further well you won't actually know because i'm not going to use these but that sits like that on the main hoop and it comes down and then this it sits there against it all yeah and then it all ties together again with a nice big fat well down there yeah okay so i just thought i'd let you know that's how that works and then if you remember if you'd look back at my other videos there's a piece that fits in here which ties this to that piece to that piece to this piece so the back one actually sits still same distance in but square across the back so everything is tied in together yeah nothing's just sitting like that because if i had a bar here and a bar there and that was just welded top and bottom that could do that yeah because you've got no you've got nothing, no vertical square where this sits there it's resting on the main hoop it ain't never going to flex that way and it ain't never going to pull away because it's fully welded. So, just adding that that's how the back goes, that's how the front goes. Right, right. so what we're going to do now, these are our four lengths. Right? Four lengths. We're going to square them up so they're all square. And we want 13, 37, 13, 35. I'm going to mark them. So I brought these at 1350, so we're nearly there. 13, 35. I could have, to be honest, ordered them. 1335, but I didn't. Because it's always nice to have that little bit of buffer room, isn't it? <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is chop them, literally 15 mil of scrap. Well, this is actually 16 mil. 1335. Definitely, we're on 30. So they're a mil over. 1335. Yeah, these are these are 1351 long. My mark is bang on 1335. 
Yeah. So we're going to set these up in the saw. We're going to 45 the ends of all of them. Now what we've got is a scribe. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. See? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that up by looking down the blade so this scribe is under the blade and just go chip, like that. And then you have to remember the opposite side is the opposite cut. So I'll show you. Ta da! The saw is right there. So if we'll set you right next to us. Yeah, you'll see how I'm going to do it. So that scribe line is on the back side. <clears throat> Bring this in. Clamp it. It's another reason why people are, well, it's no reason. People are saying, oh, we're glad that you're sharing your dimensions. The dimensions don't really mean much. Well, that, that, they mean stuff. But unless you've got the equipment to make the stuff, it doesn't mean anything. To make the chassis, the measurements don't mean anything unless you've got the equipment and the skill and the know-how to make it. Do you understand what I mean? So I can see straight down the blade. I can see the scribe. And that's it. And what I need to do is move this back a touch with binding there. You do not want to bind. Anyway, thank you very much. So, that's tight. Saw is on the scribe. Watch you go. It's not turned on at the wall. So we'll cut this and I'll show you, hopefully, the scribe line has disappeared. That's what we want to, we either want to just make out the scribe line on this or the scribe line to have disappeared. And as long as all four of them disappear, you're right, aren't you? You're there. And when you do the other end, you just line the corner of the tube up with the inside of the saw blade. And then I've got a pop out, so I've a look at an M3 that needs a roll cage in it. And never push your saw down, because your blade will start scripting. Just let it go nice and slow. Just let it do its thing. <coughs> right then, so this one, there is no scribe blade. Yeah, that's just a little thing that's making it look wonky. Yeah, and now this one, please don't. <laughs> I mean, I want to see a scribe light, because I'm going to look all right, crack it up. Ta-da! Yeah. I mean, see, there's no scribe line, so we've cut on the money, yeah? So what I'll do now, is right before the very eyes, I'm going to throw a tape measure on there, and we'll see if it's still the right dimension we're looking for. 13.35, yeah? Oh, mother, don't pull up. Ah, come on. Yeah. 13.35, 13.34 and a half. So we're, we're close. That's a one mil blade, so it'll be half either side, what? Another tape measure could probably take off that half. We'll try another one. Where's my blue one back? There it is. Very steady. You watch now, I'm even worse. No, it's the same. 34 and a half. Right, we're close. So, that is how I get the 45s on my tube. And then we're going to chuck it in and do the other one. As long as they're all the same, half a milli is not going to matter because it'll only be a millimetre total. You understand what I mean? So what I'm going to do now, this is the important part so you don't end up with a lot of scrap box. 
we've cut that like that, yeah? Swing it over. So it's the same. Do not swing it round. Over. So they both go in the same direction. And exactly the same again. I'm going to line the inside of the blade up to the end of the material this time. Yeah. A little bit of variant if you need to. Okay. Let's just say, these are just my measurements. Well, that's the kind of scrap we want. You know what I mean? I mean, if you've got a good supplier, you can get them to get you these in 13, 35, with the 45s already put in, and then just narrower ones for the weeks. And there you go, look. When you cut it on the joint, yeah, see how wafer thin it is? Stop zooming, because we've cut through, haven't we? Yeah? Oh, God, this camera is so shit. Here you go. Right, so now that is the first one done. And the reason I'm doing four is because I'm making enough for two chassis. Yeah? You don't need four, obviously. Right then. I'll get these done. All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, we have what is the start of a floor, yeah? So let's go through what we've done to get to this point. We have set our saw at 45 degrees. We have made sure it's at 45 degrees perfectly. That's why you should end up with a nice little pretty square, yeah? Then we have prepped our box section. So it's prepped, it's clean. To a majority, it's all the oils are off it. Then we have measured our box, scribed our box, or whichever way you would want to do it. And we have cut our box to the desired lengths at 45 degrees, unless you're going to go just straight. So you've got the hole on the end, and then all you'll do is you'll cap the hole. And yet you can do it either way. Right, so then we've cut our box, right? So now we've got our box to length, we've got our 45 to shape, and now you've got to get it in this situation. Now, this is a very important part of the puzzle, very important. This has to be square i mean square i mean yes you can have a mill here and there but ideally you want this square because everything works off this the back suspension goes off it the cage comes up off it the front suspension comes up off it the car drives square through it so you've got no crabbing really this needs your most attention to detail right now I have to do things slightly different with this table because this table is four millimeters wider up that end than it is down this end. So my gap here changes, yeah? So what I did, I don't even know if you're gonna see it, you can sort of faintly make it out. There is a scribe line all the way down this table. I don't know. Can you see it, this line? It goes all the way up. There is other ones that come across at key suspension points. Yeah, but that line goes all the way up the table. So I find the center of this box, yeah, and I put it on that line. And these three here, I know are true and square, yeah? So then we have a perfectly parallel line at its center point then this one put it on its center point now this one this one this one this one and there's two over there they're adjustable they can move in and out because it is it's hard to get all your joints perfect if you were cutting it square so much easier but you know you could have 
half a millimeter either side where this doesn't fit so these you can undo them and they slot but once you've got that set right and you know your 45s are 45s you chuck a magnet in each corner right these should all just drop in and it should fit right basically you want perfect joints you don't want anything opening up Right, oh, God, I can't fucking read you. I can't. Oh, fuck. Forget it. But anyway, they're per you want perfect joints, okay? Yeah? Perfect joints. And it's square at 90 degrees. Right? <clears throat> so this is where you get... You've got your normal squares, haven't you? Yeah? But you got to get your daddy squares out. Your big old school ones. So I'll run these up the table, yeah? So my mum on the table, and she tells me she's square. And then, it's a bit tricky with that magnet in there, but you will yeah, the magnets, yeah, ah, fuck, the magnet's got it. You'll get my drift. I think you understand, it's square. And these, you need to have these cut very well, yeah? I mean, this... These are loose at the minute, right? But they are literally just skimming. Yeah, they were a bit of a bugger to get in, okay? Because you don't want to have to force them in because you'll stretch this. But you don't want them loose as fuck because when you weld them, it'll pull. So you need to really pay attention to your, the way you do things, okay? This is a, this is very, can't stress how important your floor is to be square, okay? And then you've got, uh, oh yeah, these. Now, once you've got this square, okay? Once you've got that in there, so you're just pushing it against, and you can see your square. These, and there. There, 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 they go there, and then another four will replace these magnets. So what I normally do is I'll put a hold down clamp here, and I'll hold that, and I'll put a hold down clamp there, and I'll hold that, then I'll weld. All this has got to come back apart, this is a trial fit, right? It's got to come back apart because we've got to clean the tube. The box because it's not it's clean but you've got a lot of mill scale on yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to scotch bright all of it and then where we're going to weld we're just going to linish it with a soft pad on the linisher you know one of these things the soft pad on the linisher clean all this we've then got a weld prep which i go through on one of my other videos well prepping basically you're putting a chamfer on this so where you've got your tube your box that's a three mil wall there yeah you are going to put like a 45 degree chamfer on there now that chamfer not the way they work here ideally is if this is a three mil wall you want a three mil chamfer so your chamfer will probably go back say so two mil or so and it will come down at 45 and it will roughly be three millimeters deep and leave a little bit of this material so it's got something to butt up against and what you're making is a cavity you see i've got that cavity there you can have another cavity this side and you are going to fill that full of weld so you're going to arc up and you're slowly going to bring it so you are filling that. And the slower you go, that's why you have to be careful on your temperatures, your powers. Like what I showed you on that bit of metal earlier. Um, this one. If you go slow, but you've got your welder up too high, you will melt the steel away inside. Yeah? You need it so you've got a nice burn 
but you're not sacrificing. You see that one there on the right? Which is this weld here. That's, it's penetrated because you can see the weld. There's a witness mark, but it's not blobbing through. So you want to get a nice blue coming up around here. So you can see your penetrations going in and you're going to fill that full of weld. You've got to weld prep. If you watch any cage video, if you just butt a tube, if you've got a piece of roll cage, like this, yeah, and I just shoved it on top of there and welded it wrong, completely wrong. You are probably welding the outside mill, mill and a half of this tube to that. That is all you will be welding. It will just sit on the top. When you 45 it, you are welding basically as you arc and the weld goes inside that 45, it's remelting all of this material and shoving it onto there. Weld prep. We'll go through the weld prep anyway in another video. So all this is just a test fit. And then it's all going to come apart, all cleaned, all chamfered, prepped, nice, secured. This has got to be clamped down very well because... Whatever we weld first, we will weld this. This is actually the bottom of the car. Yeah? So all this has got to be welded and then linished back flat. Yeah? So we've got to get the weld really deep into its core because we're going to weld it flat. Because otherwise, when we flip it over, it won't sit on the table flat. And also, when you put your alley floor on, it's just going to be nice and flat. Right? But well, anyway, this is one of my floors. It doesn't have to be one of yours. If you want a single seater, you could take this one off. Well, no, you wouldn't really. You take this one off, move it to there, and you could have your seat in the middle here. As long as it's not dead center, you're allowed in the UK on circuit racing. If it's, it's not dead center, you're only allowed center in an open wheel or a hill climb car. But it has to be off center in a circuit car, just for anybody who wants to know. So yeah, you could move this to here, put your seat bars there, and then just tie that in there. But anyway, that's the basis of my floor. And you've seen my measurements. It's completely up to you if you just you could just you could make that. You could just put one big fat X in it and a couple of you could do whatever you wanted. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this video here. And uh, the next one, I don't know, what should we do? We really need to start building this car. It will start flying together really quick. But I might need to get some welding wire. I definitely need to get some welding gas. But in the next video, we're going to go through this floor. And we're going to clean it. I'm going to finish up design because I'm still if and I what I want to do. But we're going to clean it, weld prep it hopefully get some weld on it and then i'll show you the curve because when you weld this side it will bow like a freaking banana you would not believe how much it will bow then you flip it over clamp it down welding it straightens itself out right then thanks for watching thanks for subscribing give me a like if you don't mind and i will see you in the next space frame build see you later